Video Trade. This is Don Kaufman. July 27th, 2022. 10 minutes to go to the cash close here on this FOMC Wednesday. S&Ps exploding to the upside. Nearly a 3% move up on the Fed announcement. 108 handles in the S&Ps. At one point, we were up nearly 5%. In the NASDAQ, again, based on an aggressive Fed. The question everybody's got to be thinking, how much more can the markets handle of these aggressive Fed rate hikes? 75 basis points. You know, I'm only going to briefly break down what transpired with Fed. Ultimately, the Fed comes out, <clears throat> sees its own shadow, 75 basis point hike, but the marketplace was expecting it. And the big circle that I'm drawing on your screen is just showing you <laughs> between when the market actually announced 75 basis point hike, right? And Jerome Powell speaking, what did the marketplace do? Absolutely nothing. It's also incredibly important to understand <clears throat> the S&Ps were already up 50 plus points prior to Jerome Powell speaking. So all of a sudden, Jerome Powell makes a statement. The statement was maybe a little bit more dovish than people had anticipated. What he ultimately said is, well, there's eight weeks until the next FOMC meeting. <clears throat> and in that eight week period, again, being data dependent, they may not necessarily hike as aggressively as they had. Market loved it and exploded to the upside. But I wanna show you an area of real contention here. Then we'll actually really break this down. <clears throat> the area of contention is, Look at the bond markets. The bond markets are completely confused. <laughs> I mean, you have, what? The bonds themselves down nine ticks. The notes are actually up four and a half ticks. Talk about a little confusion. And it gets even better than that. If you actually cruise over with me here for just a moment, we're gonna cruise over to Tasty. Look at the two year. The two year is actually down big. <clears throat> the 10 years off mildly and the 30 year. So the yield curve, which has been massively inverted, kind of uninverted just a little bit. It didn't completely uninvert, but the yield curve is less inverted than it was in the previous trading session. I'll actually take the other side of that. I believe we're actually going to go into a massive yield curve inversion where the two-year absolutely smokes over the 10, even the 30 in here. So <clears throat> that is an opinion piece right off the bat. But again, knee-jerk reaction to what you're seeing inside of the FOMC announcement, the markets loved it. Now, everything that you're seeing on the screen right now, okay, is, yeah, it's a big move. It's almost a 3% move. And, you know, well, you know, it's a big move. Can't, can't deny that. But it was expected. And that was the one point that I really wanted to drive home over here is because everybody's going to listen to the financial media. They're like, yeah, look at the marketplace. It rallied. And the Fed is just, the Fed's giving it to us, you know, 75 basis point increase multiple times, right? Again, sequential 75 basis points and the market loves it. And you have to kind of scratch your head on that front and think to yourself you're like, hey, wait a second. It might take anywhere from three to six months before we really feel these rate hikes. Like this could be devastating, but don't worry. The Fed may actually slow down in some of those rate hikes. It just doesn't leave me warm and fuzzy. But as I said, the marketplace priced this in. Like, look, this is the expected move. That's the upper edge of the expected move, the lower edge of the expected move. Roughly, we're looking for plus or minus about a $97 move on the week. <laughs> we got one, but I want to show you something that, again, it left me very, very perplexed about this week. <clears throat> yeah, I already showed the bonds. Yeah, volatility's down. Volatility maybe should be down, right? One of the biggest news announcements of the week came out, but wait, there's actually more. If you cruise over with me to the SPX option chain, look at it for yourself. First of all, it's an FOMC day. You would expect a huge amount of contract. Huge amount of contract size, you got almost uh, almost 2 million contracts traded in the SPX. Ah, the reason I'm actually bringing that up is, and I'm less inclined to care about the volume inside of the SPX, but I wanted to show you something really interesting <laughs> that left me kind of, uh, oh, I think a little bit nervous about the remainder of this week. And that's this. As I just displayed to you a moment ago, the entire week, which is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, had about a $97 expected move, right? But yet we're here we are and we're pretty much through Wednesday. So you only have Thursday and Friday and we still have about a $65 move. 
there is still heavy risk priced into the remainder of this week. And I wanted to kick off this evening's video with that. Like again, <clears throat> Fed, this happened, we rallied, okay? Neither here nor there. Now you gotta look forward. And you gotta look forward to the fact that one of the interesting things that the marketplace is telling you is, you think the risk is passed, and all of a sudden you see a $65 expected move. You go, wait, what? Why are we still at a $65 move? Like, I get it. Meta, the artist formerly known as Facebook, is coming out after the bell. Tomorrow, we're gonna hear from the likes of Apple, okay? We're gonna hear from obviously, you know, Amazon. <laughs> Some big numbers coming out. The marketplace though, it's already moved on. It's already moved on past the Fed and is now looking specifically at earnings. It's a rare case when the marketplace as a whole, meaning the S&P 500, it's a really rare case, the S&P 500 is actually pricing risk for an earnings announcement. Like if you look at the SPX, it's like the SPX is actually pricing, I'm going through earnings just to display this, right? And when you see an earnings announcement coming out, what do you typically see? You see front vol being a little bit higher than some of the back vol. That's exactly what you're seeing here. I mean, you're up to about what? About a 27 vol back over here, which is next week. Oh, we dropped to like a 20 vol because we're through it. Keep this in mind. It's a very, very rare occurrence. Like, you know, it's it's not rare to see volatility into degrees of backwardation, but it is rare to see such a large announcement, you know, and so much apprehension about this Fed uh, announcement come out. The rip and rally happens, but we still pack a whole lot of punch for the remainder of this week. And I say, keep it in mind. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is that line right there. <clears throat> what is it? It's 40.59 in the SPX. Why did I just highlight that? Because it's the upper edge of the expected move. Now, the beginning of this week, Monday, absolutely nothing. Tuesday, we sold off, we rallied up, we laughed, we cried. <laughs> Here we are on a Wednesday. All right, we're headed towards the upper edge of the expected move, but we're not home yet, okay? We're not home yet, and this would actually be, again, that is 40.59 in the SPX, okay? Is a very likely occurrence at some point, you know, between Thursday and Friday. Again, I left you with this on the weekend video. On the weekend video, we talked about the chances to go down right here to the gravity point, which was 39.31. We did it. We checked that box. We now exploded back to the upside. So of course, everybody's like, okay, where do we go from here? There's another gravity point, but that's all the way at 4211. At this point, I don't necessarily think we have it in us. I mean, we've come from 3639, okay, to 4028. I mean, that is just a spectacular 400 point move. It's 10% rally inside of the S&Ps since when? Oh, less than what? You know, yeah, two, three weeks, you know, that we really started to burst to the upside. Again, a lot of this was just kind of back and forth, but there's been two to three weeks where we really had that big burst to the upside. Net, net, if you're looking at in total time over here from uh, June 17th to present time, you're six weeks total to have a 400 or a 10% rally inside of the S&Ps. At this point, again, I think we're still on a little bit of marked time in terms of more volatility coming into the marketplace. As I said, volatility. When I say that, I don't necessarily want to get all bared up, okay? I am bared up. That's my positions, you know, resonate around some bearish positions. Nevertheless, that volatility, it's alive. Like you can still see markets don't just spurt 115 or 120 handles higher in a normal functioning market. This reeks of volatility. We're seeing really high correlation coefficients in here in the S&P 100 reeks of volatility. You're seeing just, you know, outright confusion inside of the bond market, reeks of volatility. You do realize that on the Fed statement today, you're going to love this one. In the Fed statement today, when we took off to the upside here and Jerome Powell comments, okay, uh, go take a look at oil at the exact same time. <laughs> oil loved it. So you have to put the, the combination of these factors together and realize you're like, oh, that's interesting. All asset classes ripped. Dollar actually did back off a little bit, but we've been anticipating that. Interesting and ironically, metals ripped to the upside. So at present time, we've got okay, a pretty good feel for markets that we're still in the midst of volatility. Now, granted, we've definitely gotten further up 
than I would have initially anticipated, but it's still very much par for the course as we're coming in right now to the cash close. There's the bell. All right, last but definitely not least, can't forget about the fact that we are going to have Facebook directly after the bell. Is it going to have a significant impact on the NASDAQ? Not at all. I think Meta at this point, um, that's, that's past being a story. It's less than a half a trillion dollar market capitalization. All the weight at this particular point in time, I believe needs to be put on both Apple and Amazon. And that's actually why we're still seeing heavy amounts of volatility. Again, in terms of a directional feel, hitting the upper edge of the expected move on the week makes a lot of sense in the SPX. But again, I remind each and every one of you, if you haven't been doing this for a long time, okay, just note that heavy volatility often follows FOMC announcements, the Thursday, the Friday thereafter. So we are by no means out of the woods yet in this marketplace. Take advantage at this point of the up move. I'm going to look to establish some short bias in some in-out spreads. So I'm actually going to fade the rally in some circumstances, maybe specifically inside of some of the financials, looking for a little bit of a pullback. If you're going to go out and you're going to sell some premium, okay, wait for us to hit the upper edge of that expected move. Much more to come both Thursday and Friday live here on Theo Trade. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.